Welcome to today's Life Coach Pod. I am super excited about our guest. We're going to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, which is um, stuff. Stuff. I I am nothing if not about stuff. And I know it's bad because not now that I'm staying at my daughter's house, I've recreated my world. That's how much it is a part of me. So we're going to dig into that. But first, it's really important that I show on day two what the little uh, Chirpenstein babies are looking like. So here we have them. They were born on Earth Day. This is the second day. They're just little a cotton-headed ninny muggin things. They're tiny, but there are five in there. And if I, um, if you go to my Facebook, you can see the video. They just kind of breathe in unison up and down, up and down. They're so cute. So I'll keep you updated on that. They're not going to be in the nest very long. They'll fledge within 14 days. So I'm really over attached to them is the problem. Today, Elizabeth Reed is here to talk about cutting through the clutter. It is Thursday, April 23rd, for those of you keeping track. And if you have been sheltering in place, it is March 54th, if you can believe it. We have some great guests coming up. Stephanie Simpson tomorrow to talk about rethinking stress. Typical Motivation Monday, in which you motivate me. No, that's not how it works. I'll motivate you, I hope. And then Amy Gardner will be here about COVID, talking about COVID proofing your career. So if you're thinking about job change or it's been volunteered for you and you've had no choice and you are now facing a job change or thinking about a job change, that should be a good discussion. It's also a good discussion for anybody who currently has their job and wants to make sure that they keep it. So she'll be here on Tuesday. Before we dive into the subject and our guest, I want to talk about a few fast facts about stuff. Again, as I said, near and dear to my heart has always been something I've dealt with. I have hired organizers who have showed me the error of my ways, but have also um, pushed me in ways. I think the feelings part is where I get caught up in it. Also, I'm super visual, so I need to see my stuff. So I know that it's there. If I don't see it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> but let's talk about it because this, these numbers blew me away. 80% of what we keep, we never use. Think about that. 80% of what we keep, we never use. That might may not include your partner. That's up to you. Um, getting rid of clutter eliminates 40% of housework in the average home. We need to hit this number again. 40% of the housework would be eliminated by getting rid of clutter. Okay, huge. 50% of homeowners rate the garage as the most disorganized place in the house. As a child of a woman who also loves clutter, I can tell you cleaning the garage was our most hated family activity. And yet we always had to do it. That always happened. We wear 20% of the clothes that we own 80% of the time. The rest just hangs there just in case. Now I know we're all sheltering and it's a weird time. And as we pandemic, it's probably even higher. Some of us might not even be changing our clothes. But the point is, Think about that. We wear 20% of the clothes we own 80% of the time. That's what we have favorites. You know it. Okay. 80% of the clutter in our homes is a result of disorganization, not lack of space. Now, it's true. There's going to be people who just don't have space. Up here at my daughter's house, this house does not have any space. We're getting creative about it. But the point is, for those of you who do have space. 80% of the clutter is a result of disorganization. And I cannot wait to hear what Elizabeth says about this. The average American burns 55 minutes a day, roughly 12 days a year, looking for things they own but cannot find. This, of course, has a corollary, which is as your age increases, this gets worse because it happens all. Not only are you likely to have more stuff by the time you get older, but there's no way you can find it. And if we, every time we walk through a threshold, our brain clears. So yeah, forget it. You're just wasting time. Which leads to the next statistic, and this is my last one, which I think is um, provocative. The average American spends one year of their life looking for lost or misplaced items at home and in the office. Oh my God, we're all on a journey looking for stuff. Elizabeth, welcome to the show. I have today Elizabeth Reed helping us cut through the clutter. She's going to tell us what's going on. Why are we so bad at this or good at it? I'm not sure which. Hi, Jennifer. Yeah, thanks for having me on your pod. And I'm so excited to be here to talk about clutter. It is near and dear to my heart too, because it's been meaningful for me to declutter. 
interesting to organize my space and I'm passionate about sharing this gift with other people. Ah, well, welcome. And tell us why, why, why is this, why is this our problem? What, I mean, I understand we're Americans and we have access to stuff. We have but access to stuff. We have a consumer oriented society and there are reasons we hold on that are based on survival. Just it's in our DNA that we want to cling to our objects. Okay, good. It's not my fault. All right, good. All right, so tell me, tell me more about this then. So you're fighting against nature. Well, and it's especially an issue right now because people are in their homes more. Oh, and, yes. You know, because we're sheltering in place, we're staying at home, we're social isolating, and we're surrounded by all these objects that we might not have even noticed before, but now what well, the walls are closing in and so are these things. Oh yeah, I, that's the one thing for sure that's been clear to me from all the sheltering in place. The one thing none of us need is more stuff. <laughs> I don't care if we trade stuff, like I'm trying to do a lot of upcycling or Craigslisting, like things, my daughter definitely needs a few things, but then stuff has to go too, because we just, it's clear, stuff is not what's gonna help us survive and thrive. Exactly. Well, exactly. And it's more to maintain and look after. So yeah, I, I read, and I, I can show you, I read this book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo, right about the time when it came out in 2014. This is she. She's yes. adorable. She, I'm only 5'4". She makes me look like an Amazon woman. She's, she comes up to about here on me. Yeah, but she wrote this little book about how you can change your life by tidying up. And I did. I, I cleaned out all of my old things and uh, organized the things I had left based on what sparks joy for me and has made a huge difference. Uh, it, after I started with objects and then it expanded into my job. I quit my job. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I was a CPA. I had 20 years of accounting experience and I just said, I can't do this. I want to do something with people and not just be on the computer all the time. And I've just realized I was choosing things based on what I should have or what other people thought was right for me instead of what I really love. So, so it's been a, sh a mindset shift on how do I want to live my life and then what objects do I need to surround myself with to live that lifestyle that's ideal for me? So that's really important. That's a really foundational principle, right? Which is find the things that bring you joy. Right. And if you right. don't, if you're not in touch with joy, okay, pleasure, peace, calm, zen, whatever you call it. Yes, um, exactly. So for this book, the, and, and there was a follow-up book, Spark Joy, the concept is, does it spark joy for you? And that word, spark joy is the Japanese word tokimeki, which is literally heart flutter. So oh. like, you have butterflies in your heart about this thing, or is it, does it weigh you down? Does it lift you up and make you feel happy and excited or depressed? And I can tell when my clients pick up an object and they hold it, how they feel. Does it spark joy? Is there that tokimeki or is it bringing them down? So that's interesting because we talk a lot on the show about awareness and what you're speaking of, even though it's in another language, it's the same idea of the stuff around you. If you're not aware of its impact on you, it is having an impact. Yeah. So, and then you literally go through an exercise of forcing people to be aware. <laughs> right? Is that like, that's the process or? I, I, I'm not sure I force. <laughs> well, I, okay. You, yeah. yeah. But when I'm in their space with them, we, we, one object at a time, evaluate whether it sparks joy for them. So yeah, um, clutter does distract us mentally. Just seeing it there, it's like a mental to-do list. Oh, I know I need to handle that thing. And it also, it, it's a reflection of our inner state. So the things we have around us reflect what's going on in our heart and mind. Um, oh, that's now that's kind of worrisome now. Now you just <laughs> shifted it. Like... So if you All right, tell me more. <laughs> uh, raise that level of awareness. Do I, is this truly reflecting what I want to, to be with the person I am and the person I'm becoming? So yeah, let me just go through the process. If, sure. If that's good. So with KonMari, and I, I, I believe it works even if you're not Japanese, 
You don't have to be Japanese to follow this process. You start with clothing. And we start with clothing because it touches our body. It's very personal to us. And it is that somatic awareness that you're talking about. How does my body feel about this thing? So I have this example for my tidying, and that is my sorority jersey. No, of course. I graduated from college in 19... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a long time ago, 1987, oh, 86, undergrad. And I have not put this on my body since then. It still fits. In fact, it's kind of big. It's big, yeah. Yeah, I can still wear it, but I don't. And when I did this process, I thought, okay, well, what, for one thing, it has my name on it. So this is part of my identity. Being a Pi Beta Phi is, it tells me who I am because I, I am a, you know, a Pi Phi. Yeah, <laughs> but, but no, that's a big deal. I mean, yeah, that's a big part of who you are in college. Right. And it's well, usually it's, lifetime friends, right? Right, and the alumni and everything, but I am never going to wear this as clothing. The purpose of objects in our space is to serve us. And the, so it's not serving me, stuffed in the bottom of a drawer. I kept it for workshops and for things like this, but I'm, I would discard this. And I would encourage a client to discard this because it's not, we don't need the object to tell us who we are. And- Oh wait, that's so important because I think so often, and oh my God, I'm a, I'm a terrible with this with baby clothes even. Like, but I remember how she looked in that. And it's like, but I know. I mean, of course you do, right? That was important. Yes. But why do I need the object? Because I think we really do think these things are like the breadcrumbs of our life. Like, right. without the breadcrumbs, right. then wouldn't it just be gone? Right, right. And that's okay. So the, it's the power of now. It's living in the present. And who are you becoming? Uh, for many of my clients, the home is a museum to the past. Yes. Oh, what a great way to say it. And it's not supporting their ideal lifestyle now. Um, you know, for, like for your children, science tells us our cells in our body are being replaced all the time so that over a period of time, possibly seven years, nothing is physically left of you that was there seven years ago. So for example, this person that was a Pi Beta Phi sorority girl is, doesn't really exist anymore. If it's, if that's in the past, it's not who I am now and I'm not becoming anything. <laughs> that, with, that makes sense to me. I mean, it's weird because you still have that wistful, um, but, but, but Elizabeth, that's like your shirt. Like that was the shirt. Like, right? I mean, that. how do you not hear that voice that's like... Right. Well, right. But so, and, and uh, you know, I would have my client hold it. And if it sparks joy and you're going to wear it, keep it. Or if you're going to display it. So use or display. Okay. I am not going to use this as a shirt or display it. So it can go. So we do that with clothing. People hold on to things like wedding dresses, baby clothes, uh, Clothes don't make a good souvenir. They're intended to be worn. And it does not honor the, the, the energy of that clothing to keep it stuffed in a drawer. That's, you know, that's so profound. Clothes don't make a good souvenir. That's probably, and I, and y'all know you have some clothes in your drawers or in your closets or stashed in a box, in a box, because it's a souvenir. Because if it wasn't, you'd be wearing it. Yes. Right? Or, or you put it on the wall as a piece of art because something about it so gets you fired up. Right. You, you love it. it so much. If you love it, keep it. But what I'm fi I find is that if it's not being used, it's because it's not loved. It's not loved. Wow. It's so simple, but like the way you're saying it really is going in. Okay. Okay. So clothing would be the first category. I can do clothing with a client in five hours. So it doesn't have to be a six month long process of you just pull everything out, you decide, do I love it? Do I not love it? Toki Maki. If you love it, store it. And if you don't love it, discard it, but be sure to thank it for everything it brought to your life so that you have closure. Well, that's a really, you know, it sounds woo woo because I love, we love the woo woo. But the idea is I get what you're saying though. It's, it's actually to acknowledge its, acknowledge its role, be happy with what it did for you so that you, so that the leaving, the, the going away is 
not so painful. It's kind of respectful. Respectful, right. And even if all it brought to your life was that it taught you that you didn't like the color orange, then it taught you something. It brought something to you. Maybe it was just the thrill of buying it or the thrill you received when someone gave it to you as a gift. But it's not, it doesn't have to be a permanent member of your wardrobe unless you love it. Um, yeah, so that's clothing. Then we move on to books. Books are also very personal. Uh, I know when the Netflix TV show came out, people misunderstood Marie Kondo to say that uh, you could only keep 30 books. And she no never said that. She wouldn't say that because she believes, and I believe, that you, if it sparks joy, keep it. But the time to love a book is when you first get it. Um, any book that you have that you've never read, you're probably not going to read it. Uh, if you started it's, it, like I started this book, yeah, and I got a few pages in and I realized it's like every other John Grisham book and I'm not going to finish this. <laughs> but I kept it because it's a perfectly good book, but I'm not going to read it. This is one that could go. And then we have books that we, we read it, we loved it, but we don't plan to read it again. That can go. But if you have a book like, I have this one, a book about oh, yeah. birds, and birds, I, yeah. I get it out and I say, oh, that's a uh, Florida scrub jay. <laughs> I, I use this all the time because uh, I don't know why. It's I'm like upset. a reference book though. So that makes sense. It's, it's a thing you come back to. And I love I just love the book too. I love the pictures. Even if I never saw any of these book, birds in person, I would just love the book. So actually, and that that kind of book, they made them so they feel really good. I don't know what the DK good. books are about, but they feel good. I know they're <laughs> solid. The paper's good. Like everything about that book is a that's a good brand of book. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So, so the the idea is not to minimize your books. If you love those books. Um, you know, keep them, but really pick it up and hold it. So same thing, pull out all your books and sort them and only keep the ones that spark joy that you love. So it's so interesting because right now um, people are getting rated on the books that they have behind them in their home offices. <laughs> it's hilarious. And people are freeze framing and trying to read the titles. <laughs> and it's like, it's it, in a weird way, books have become a way of describing us. Like you walk into a home and you look at someone's books, but your point is, you don't have to throw that notion away, but then be really conscious of what you're choosing. Yes. And, and if it is how people are deciding who you are, you better have read those books because they're going to call you out on it. <laughs> well, right. And the books that you love are a reflection of your heart and mind. And that's okay. It, and, you know, but just knowing that the book doesn't tell who you are. You are you without the book. That's right. That, and that, that is important because I think we forget that, that all the props and everything aren't who we are. Right. We're who we yes. are. Um, I went into the mission field in 1990, 1999 and I didn't take anything but my clothes. And it's amazing how different it is not having the house and the car and the, the you know, whatever to say to the world, this is me. It's, it's a different feeling. Yeah, you're kind of stripped down to your basics, right? You just have to be. It's all on you to be. Wow. But yeah, so books, uh, you know, the, but the book, we love the book because it either entertains us or it educates us. And if it's done that job and it's not, doesn't have any more work to do, there's no purpose, it can go. Love it. Love it. Okay. So we did clothing, books, papers. The KonMari method for papers is throw them all away. So... Uh, you know, bills. Oh my uh, God. Statements. This is my it's life. This is my desk time. right now. Papers, papers, papers. Okay. Throw them all away. Um, anything you can get online, you don't need to keep. Um, keep identity documents, legal documents, tax records. Tax everything records. You can go. I have all of my documents in a plastic bin that's this. Stop it. That's it? Yeah, actually, I have it right here. That's um, your, every, but you know, your life. My, your yeah, everything is in here, uh, and it's not full. So my kids' birth certificates are in there, and my passport. And yeah, what do you really need? Well, so, but I have file cabinets. <laughs> oh my right. god! <laughs> yeah, those can all probably be emptied. It depends. Now, if you have some work where, like, teachers want to refer to old lesson plans or something. 
Um, but I think when we keep that old work, we, it helps, it's, it prevents us from creating something new. So it's blocking energy for creating new things. That's a really good point. I mean, like I have some weird papers from a remodel that I want to keep the who I got this stuff from. So if there's something wrong, but to your point, it doesn't, that's a very specific thing. You're, what you're really talking about is all the statements, which most of us should be turning off, guys, planet, climate. Let's try to get those papers to stop coming. Um, you know, do you throw magazines in that pile? Because that's the same thing. I mean, magazines, read them and then recycle, yeah. right? Or Right, recycle. Yeah, I, I, um, I agree. Yeah, magazines, like th this kind of magazine is good for that week. And then it's probably old news. Um, yeah, so magazines definitely well magazines would go with books okay um, but same, same idea with, but same idea if it's you either read it and you're you're done with it or you're not going to read it <laughs> but you might discover something that you want to read and as you're sorting that might be something that you want to keep and to but you know put it on your list to do i love it okay um, so papers, just throw them all away. Quit spending your time sorting and organizing and trying to feel organized about this paper that you don't even want or need. Love it. Okay, so the next category is komono, which is a Japanese word for small things. It just means miscellaneous, like everything in the kitchen, everything in the bathroom, uh, maybe everything in that garage. That's tchotchkes. Touch keys, yes. Like small things, like I'm just looking in front of me, like small things, but well, I have so many small things in front of me. <laughs> Headsets and I don't yeah. know why, like saving a stupid Tic Tac container because I feel like, oh, can I use this for something? Yeah, this no. is like classic. Yeah, I might need it someday as the death of decluttering. Just let it go, unless you really love it, but yeah, just let it go, let it go. So, and I, I'm a big one, recycle it. Uh, upcycle it do something if you can turn that into something you're gonna make money off of fine but do it don't just hold on to it for when it comes okay yes, get your point. I'm going to use it for a craft one of my clients <laughs> who will remain nameless because she might watch this someday uh, yeah I oh I could make something out of that piece of string I'm so that person <laughs> I'm driving my daughter crazy with that like I can but wait it's not she's like no mom yeah, no it can go. if you want string they have more at the store um, yeah, so small things. One thing I had kept was my mother's china. Yeah. And you can see this, the, the, I don't know if you can see it's kind of a glare, but the foot of it is broken. Yeah, I did. I, I, yeah, you can see the I had it this in, in a box, wall of my china in a box, thinking that was keeping it safe. And when I did finally pull it out, some of it was broken while it was being protected in the box. Um, the point of things like china, uh, silver is to be used. Get it out and use it. If you think it's beautiful and you love it, use it. And if you don't like it, you can get rid of it. These these have a little bit of value. I could sell them on replacements.com, not this one. <laughs> this is broken. But like the, the bowls, if you wanted to buy one of the bowls from this set, it's $120. Okay. So I emailed them and with my list of what I had and they wanted to pay me like $10 for my $120 bowl. So they, even the things that you think have value, it's, if you can find a market, good luck because there's, it's hard to sell old things. So it's a whole nother project. Yeah, actually I know, well, this is why I love Craigslist because you know what the collector, they'll grab them. I mean, not for the price that, like you said, they'll grab them for the $10 so they stay out of the <laughs> landfill but they'll do the work to go sell them. None of us regular people have time for that kind of industry. Right. And we don't know where the buyers are. Right. So, uh, if, you have, if you have special things, get them out and use them. And if they're not really that special, but you're keeping it because grandma gave it to you or your mom or, I, I mean, a, a lot of times with decluttering, if it's not one thing, it's your mother. <laughs> <laughs> mom has given us so many gifts over our lifetimes that are so, so special. I'm kind of lucky right now, my mom has dementia. She doesn't remember if she gave me a gift. And so it won't hurt her feelings if I let it go. But yeah. You know, um, when I declutter with clients, I always find expired medicines. These are actually from my decluttering. I had three packages of allergy medicine for my dog who died in 2014. <laughs> I had these for years. 
thinking, I don't know, it just reminded me of my dog and I loved him, but I don't need to keep expired dog medicine. It's just not adding, it has no purpose. Right. So these free makeup y things you get gift with purchase. Yeah. Clients all, often end up discarding those. There's nobody wants your used makeup. So there's right. No it, don't donate it to anyone <laughs> it's yeah it's hygienic it's not, no one wants it um, come so, home use it and move on like that's the yeah. point if you want it and you love it and you use it great and otherwise you can discard it so yeah the same thing applies with everything in the kitchen the bathroom um, if you're not using it, it and you don't love it you can let it go and then the hardest category is the last one and that's sentimental items those things like the baby clothes, I would say those are more in a sentimental category. Oh, absolutely. Like I you have, can even pick them up and smell them. Right. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, oh, it's the worst. But yeah. Yeah. This, uh, can you see what that is? Oh yeah. It's the, it's the, is that puppy print? Yes. With the day my dog died before they euthanized him, they took his footprint. Okay. This thing brings me grief. I'm sad thinking about it right now. <laughs> like, right? I, as, this is not sacred. So that's the other thing. If I could get one point across, it would be there are no sacred objects. This is just a piece of clay. And just because it has my dog's footy print in there, it's not sacred. And I asked You're my right. Kids, and then they did it the day that you were, that he was going down. Like, oh, <laughs> I know that's not the thing. You're right. That's not the thing. That's this the wrong thing. This does not bring thing. me joy at all. It brings me grief. Um, and then there are a lot of things like this. Uh, my daughter's, let's see, most outstanding member of the chorus in 2006. Um, I mean, these things do not tell us who we are and she doesn't want it. It's really, if you look at it and its component parts, it's plastic and it's a little marble base. But, so it's not sacred. It doesn't- Plus you could take a photograph of it, put the date on it, and it's no no yeah no. <laughs> i was like you could just digitize it and they're like remember you got this there you go like you could you could um if you really love it that much that you want to preserve the photo of it I but guess. you probably took it that day right i mean more likely yeah. like this the picture when they got it my so my daughter is not encapsulated in this uh, yeah um, as much as I love my daughter, there's, you know, this isn't. Well, no, but I'm just thinking real time, but in 2006, when she came up with it, sometimes we take that picture, right? Because then you that see the kid. More, with, yeah. yeah. Then you're like, there's her enthusiasm at the moment. But you're right. Right now, the picture of it is bleh. You're right. right. It's absolutely, right. who cares? Who cares? Um, and then there's some other things, like I have some things I kept that I, this is not from my discards. I went to Thailand uh, and I bought this. It's made out of clay from from uh, an island called Kokrat. And yeah, it's, isn't it so pretty? I love it this. Really I save it, but I do. It just I love it for what it is, and I I will keep it forever. I I think. And um, I have some other sentimental things. Like I made this, and I'm very proud of it. It's pottery. I glazed it on the inside. Oh, yeah. And I designed the outside and other people are like, that's pretty ugly. And I don't care what you think. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So when you're talking about sentimental things, the idea is to tune in and, and figure out, is it a happy memory? Just because it's sentimental doesn't mean it's something you need to remember. Right. Like you said, with the footprint of the dog at his death, like, oh my God, versus um, something you made that has the memory of you being there, that every time you think of it, you're transported back to that place. Like that, I understand the difference. That's really powerful. Yeah, and it, it, it makes me feel good. Um, and I, I, it's a connection to the earth, you know, things made of clay. Yeah. I really like um, and I also kept these. These were my first toe shoes when I was a little ballerina. Aren't they so cute? They're super cute. I was a clown, a harlequin, and my outfit was blue. Oh. So, uh, and you were on point. You were actually able to do it. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, 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 well, that's a lot of work. I know. I, I, I <laughs> had a ballerina friend, and I know the amount of work you have to do to get up, to get to that point. Like, that's a big deal. Yeah, and they're really little. I don't know if you can tell, but I yeah. was 
it's the smallest size of Toshis they make because I was so advanced. Of course, I never, after I hit puberty, I wasn't very good at ballet, but when I was little, I was pretty good. <laughs> um, I, I, these still spark joy for me. Other people are like, why do you have stinky old shoes sitting around? Because they don't, they are kind of ancient, but I like them. So I, I guess my point there is it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. It's what you love and what do you want in your space? And I love that. I'm going to, um, if, if people wanted to, so, okay, first of all, I already talked to Elizabeth about coming back because I think this topic is so interesting, but I want to make sure that you can see how to find her at Spark Joy Jax, J-A-X. Is that like Jacksonville? What is that, Jax? Yeah, yeah, that's my home city, Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, so that's a good way for people to remember it. SparkJoyJax.com. Um, what, what can people, how can people tap your services? What do you do for folks? Yeah, so I have been doing in-person decluttering with local clients, but with the the coronavirus and social distancing, that's we're not doing that right now. So I'm running um, workshops online, virtual workshops kind of like this. I have groups of six where the and it's actually very powerful because the ladies, well, it's always ladies. Sorry, guys, most guys are not interested in this. Um, ladies come together and really support one another for their decluttering process. Oh, I like that idea. What a nice innovation. So we can come to your website. They can learn about the classes. Um, if somebody just wants to get started and see how that process works, they can join one of your classes, take one of your classes, and then, gosh, you might find even some support partners for this process because I can imagine um, there are times when it's really hard. And, yes, and it becomes get... emotional and people get stuck. Yeah. So, and that's where the group or having a consultant can really make a difference. And because I'm a coach, I'm a, IPEC is my coaching program. I'm uh, an ICF certified coach. I can help people with those deeper issues of attachment or endowment, some of those things that the, the heart issues. Yeah. And that's why I want you to come back because I think that's so important. It, this right now was such a great um, explanation of how to go think about the things. Like now I'm going to be annoying all day because I'm going to be thinking about the things. But <laughs> to come back and start to talk about the deeper stuff, the, the voices in our heads, the feelings, the, the whole thing, I, I'm really excited about doing that as well. So I want to thank you for coming today. This was really, really great. And I think folks at home know you can always hang out with me on Twitter. Um, that's where I'm a little bit more out of control. And I and Elizabeth, thank you so much for today's podcast. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank Bye. you.